Coming up, fly along with a World War II wasp as she revisits training in a BT-13, and an easy and free way to find the airport. A STEM experience for youngsters at our next fly-in, winds rip through a Texas airport, and ripping up air traffic control privatization. The OPA Live this week begins in just a moment. Build and fly with the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. Modernize, not privatize. We've told you what we're against. Now here's what we're for. This is the briefing paper in the form of an emergency checklist that AOPA is giving to lawmakers and other opinion leaders spelling out exactly why we oppose privatization and the steps AOPA proposes to make a great air traffic control system even better. We'll tell you how to get your own copy in a moment, but here's what you should know should be done about ATC. First of all, stop sequestration. Remove ATC and modernization from the budget games or the shutdown game. Right now, for example, we're 44 days away from a possible FAA shutdown because airline lobbying efforts and congressional committee action has been directed to trying to privatize ATC rather than approving an FAA budget for the next fiscal year. Which leads to another point. Give the FAA a two-year budget to provide a stable and predictable funding stream for operations and modernization. We should require the FAA to work with industry to create a more agile and innovative procurement system and mandate that the FAA consolidate outdated and unneeded facilities. Give the NextGen Advisory Committee more authority to guide and implement air traffic control modernization in initiatives and have that committee report directly to Congress on how additional NextGen technologies would or would not reduce airline delays. The committee should also tell Congress what other steps could be taken to increase capacity. And so the Next Gen Advisory Committee, AOP has been involved in that practically since the beginning, right? We have, and, and despite the fact that we're on different sides with, with the airlines when it comes to privatization, we do work closely with uh, the operational folks at the airlines right. on the Next Gen Advisory Committee. And uh, we want to beef up what that committee already does. We already do a lot of good work in that committee. I co-chair the Next Gen Advisory Committee subcommittee, only right. in Washington, and we've got subcommittees <laughs> and subcommittees. <laughs> but the subcommittee is where we actually set the priorities, and I think we just need to give the NAC, the Next Gen Advisory Committee, more visibility. Right. Okay. Well, that could be helpful. Meanwhile, as we mentioned earlier, you can get your own position paper on this checklist to share with your friends and neighbors and, most importantly, members of Congress. There's a new tab at the top of our website, you'll see it there on the left, and it will take you to all of our information on privatizing air traffic control. Why it would be bad for general aviation, why it won't fix the airline delay problem, problem and what you can do to help fight it. And this just in from the Congressional Budget Office, ADC privatization would increase the federal deficit by close to $100 billion over the next 10 years. CBO just scored the privatization legislation to determine the effect on the budget. Now that's a five-fold increase over earlier estimates as Congressman Schuster offers incentives to attempt to shore up support for that legislation. Oh, and by the way, the people that say they can do a better job running the air traffic control system, you know, the airlines, their performance is just getting worse according to the Bureau of Transportation Statistics. Passenger complaints are up on-time performance is down, and that's because of things like airline schedules, crew management, maintenance problems, and old equipment that can't use the modern next-gen infrastructure already in place. And why do we keep talking about this? Well, it's because the airlines haven't let up. This email from a group purporting to call itself Citizens for On-Time Flights attacks Captain Sully Sullenberger for the video he did opposing air traffic control privatization. But this group pretending to be a grassroots people's organization is really what folks in Washington call an astroturf group. If you read the small print, you'll discover that Citizens for On-Time Flights is really Airlines for America, the big airlines lobbying group. Surprise, surprise. Okay, now to some good news numbers. This is something you don't hear very often. Piston engine aircraft are leading the industry in sales improvement growth. The General Aviation Manufacturers Association, GAMA, released second quarter stats this week. 
Piston engine sales are up more than 5% compared to the same period last year, and Cirrus leads the pack. 149 SR20s and 22s sold so far. Textron is second with 112 between Bonanzas, Barons, and Cessnas. Piper is in third place, and business jet sales improved 1%. Turboprops dropped off a bit. The OPA flying to Norman, Oklahoma is fast approaching. Join us on September 8th and 9th for a great time. This year, our fly-ins have expanded. There are now all-day workshops on Friday, and they aren't just for adults. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop tells us there's a great program for young aviators to spread their wings. It's never too early to get kids plugged into aviation, and the Sooner Flight Academy does it well. Sooner Flight Academy is a K-12 STEM outreach program. We're part of the aviation department here at OU, and our job is to get kids excited about airplanes. The program's flagship is a summer flight academy that runs for seven weeks. You can see here from that camp, it's a lot of fun for the aspiring aviators. And at the AOPA fly-in to Norman, Oklahoma, program director Matt Esker has come up with a one-day version. Bring your kids, drop them off with us. We're going to do a junior pilot workshop. We're going to build and launch model rockets. We're going to do that parts of the plane. We're going to play with gliders. Um, we're going to learn about the four forces of flight. We're going to have a, a magician here who's doing an aviation and space themed magic show. We're going to watch a movie on the big screen right there behind you, uh, set up in here with popcorn and, and, uh, and drinks, and uh, uh, it's going to be fun. So while you're learning the finer points of owner maintenance or aviation weather, your kids will be learning too, but they may not even know it. Lots and lots of toys that have to do with flight, and then of course we, we sneak in a little bit of learning and they don't even notice it. But you will. Just look at the smiles the Sooner Flight Academy puts on the faces of these junior pilots. In Norman, Oklahoma, Paul Harrop, AOPA Live. Thanks, Paul. Looks like fun for the kids. If you have a pilot-to-be that wants to participate, head to our website. There you'll find a link to information about how to sign them up. It's open for ages 6 to 11. Pre-registration is required, and the cost is $60, but that includes the materials and lunch. You can read more about the flight camp at the address there on your screen. When we come back, when you can't trust the feds. And honoring the past. The OPA Live this week continues in a moment. The smoke is on. He's giving everything that he's got. Oh, I love it! He's there! The Red Bull Air Race World Championship returns to Indianapolis Motor Speedway, October 14th and 15th. Tickets now on sale. An anniversary this week. It's been 100 years since the 94th Aero Squadron was formed. The U.S. Army Air Service Unit became known for their distinctive insignia. It was an American flag motif top hat within a ring, and many members would become the first aces during World War I, including Eddie Rickenbacker. It is from that historic squadron that the AOPA Foundation draws the name of the Hat in the Ring Society. The Hat in the Ring Society allows pilots to give back to aviation by throwing their hat in the ring each year. The AOPA Foundation is humbled to honor the 100 years since the founding of the 94th. At AOPA headquarters, we had a reception to honor their century of service. They had a spirit of meet any challenge, and we think that that applies to many things in life. And here at AOPA, meeting the challenge of reinvigorating general aviation is something that we hope to carry through uh, in the name of the Hat in the Ring Squadron. The iconic squadron is still alive today. They fly F-22 Raptors out of Joint Base Langley Eustis in Virginia as the 94th Fighter Squadron. If you want to throw your hat in the ring for general aviation, call us here at AOPA. Ever wondered what goes on inside an NTSB investigation into a general aviation accident? Well, the Safety Board has launched a new blog series on the process. NTSB staff will write it and they'll explore how medical, mechanical, and general safety issues are examined in their investigations. NTSB member Dr. Earl Weiner wrote the first post and you can find it on the NTSB website under Safety Compass. But sometimes what you find on a government website is not good information, like the FAA's graphical TFR map. It stopped updating sometime last week. AOPA was alerted to the problem on Monday and immediately contacted the FAA and told them that they should take down the map or at least put a note on it. Well, they didn't do that, but by Tuesday night, they got the problem fixed. 
But this page has had quality problems before, and AOPA continues to push for high-quality graphical notums from the FAA. Other private sites, like the AOPA Online Flight Planner and ForeFlight, didn't have any problems properly displaying graphical notums. But it's important to remember that only the written notum counts as an official notum source. So, Melissa, AOPA has been working to change and improve the NOTAM system for a long time. How's that going? Well, we've made a lot of improvements. We launched a new uh, graph, uh, t a NOTAM website, um, but the next big hurdle is getting the FAA to produce graphics as the controlling source. In other words, the graphic is the official NOTAM mm -hmm. along with the text. And we're not quite there, there yet from a legal perspective, but we're, we're getting close. Okay, good to see some progress. Speaking of NOTAMs, if you're planning to fly Monday on Eclipse Day, you should check NOTAMs before you go. There will be a lot of events going on and some additional aircraft. One thing to be on the lookout for is the launch of dozens of high-altitude balloons. The balloons will be launched by groups of high school and college students. They will carry cameras that will live stream the Eclipse to the NASA website from the edge of space. And if you're thinking about watching the solar eclipse on Monday, here's a little bit of advice. Hello. I'm Stan Brock. Pretty cool, huh, these aviator sunglasses? But not cool on Monday, August the 21st. That's when we're going to see the total eclipse of the sun. That's when you want the real deal. The NASA recommended eye protection for a total eclipse. Remember this number, ISO 12312-2. NASA recommended. They've been to the moon. You haven't. Protect your eyes. Advice to take to heart from a pilot who has seen a lot. And we know that a lot of you are thinking about flying to some of the prime viewing locations for the eclipse. So we've compiled an Eclipse Resource Center on our website with just about everything you'll need to know to fly to an eclipse spot, including a state-by-state -state list of many airports in the path of totality. It would be a good idea to check NOTAMs and with the airport beforehand to make sure they'll have a parking space for you. Some of these airports are holding festivals and that could close runways and might attract a lot of people and airplanes. And so, speaking of attracting a lot of people, we're going to be attracting some of our editors and videographers and photographers. We've got four crews we're sending around uh, the country, or actually all, all along the path of the eclipse, to report uh, what pilots are doing, because there are a lot of pilots out flying. And so look for more coverage coming out of that uh, over the next week or so. And uh, be sure to check out our social media throughout the week, or uh, the next couple of days after the eclipse. We'll put lots of pictures and stuff out there. That'll so be, be a fun. lot of fun. It will be fun. And here's an interesting new way to map the world around you and help you find an airport. Seattle Avionics has figured out a way to create an affordable augmented reality system for general aviation. FlyQ Insight merges a live view from your iPhone camera with an aviation database and shows you where the airports, airports are any way you point your phone. Particularly handy in an emergency and a great way to answer that perennial passenger question, what's that airport over there? Best part, it's free. Find it in the Apple App Store for your iPhone or GPS-enabled iPad. And finally, the Women's Air Force Service Pilots were a group of civilian female pilots who responded to the call when our nation was in dire need. These brave women trained and flew military aircraft in a variety of missions during World War II. AOPA Live's Josh Cochran caught up with a group of volunteers we first met at our Anoka, Minnesota fly-in who are passionate about telling the story of the WASPs. For the volunteers who spent years restoring this airplane, today is the fulfillment of a dream. The BT-13 they've worked so hard on to serve as a monument to the Women Air Force Service Pilots is taking one of these brave women up for a flight. I can't put into words the emotion that I'm feeling personally. Um, this is the culmination of five years of work. Pilot Jordan Dieters took WASP Jane Doyle for a spin around Lake Winnebago and over the Air Venture grounds. Pretty amazing. Jane was, uh, was, was pretty excited, and uh, as was I. It was an honor to be able to uh, take her up in the airplane and uh, let her experience you know, the airplane that she trained in so many years ago. You know, I think every time I turned around to look, she had a grin uh, from ear to ear and was enjoying it, so it was, uh, it was an honor to do that. Was it like you remembered it? Yeah, it was. That lake is so big and it's so beautiful over there. It was really, really nice. This airplane took over 20,000 volunteer hours to restore, but for the men and women who poured their hearts into it, it was well worth it. 
it, it doesn't get any better than to have a wasp in the wasp airplane. It is just an amazing feeling. For Jane, the flight is a continuation of a lifelong love of flying. She's been hooked since her first flight. It just was a feeling of freedom and to look down and see the pattern of the earth and, and everything. It was so different than your view on the ground that that was, uh, and then uh, I wanted to be up in the air. It was Jane's love of flying that led her to join the wasps. She started training in 1943 in Sweetwater, Texas. After training, Jane was sent to Seymour, Indiana to do maintenance test flights and administrative flights. Jane is grateful the story of the wasps is being told with the BT-13. Oh, that was a wonderful tribute to the, to the wasp to have that plane restored. Uh, they did a beautiful job on it. The future plan for the BT-13 is to hand it off to the wasp museum in Sweetwater, Texas where it can continue to tell the incredible story of the wasps and their sacrifice during World War II. You know, I think we've succeeded in our mission in paying tribute to the people, the wasps, and um, you know that's, that's all that counts as far as I'm concerned. Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. Well, Jane and all the wasps are truly aviation heroes. The volunteers who have restored the BT-13 have big plans for the future. They already have purchased a World War II PT-19 and have started to work on that project. I feel lucky to be alive in a time where we still have these national yeah, treasures to talk to and, and experience and see them experience flight. Yeah, it is so wonderful to see them have the opportunity to get back in an airplane again and see the excitement and the thrill uh, that, that they get out of that. And what a beautiful airplane, too. And, uh, it's a real achievement to get that thing put back together and uh, hopefully it can continue to, to serve that role. Great. Yeah. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for giving us some of your time. We hope to see you back here next Thursday. And remember, don't look directly at the sun and check no tams. Instruments for Professionals.